Creating and editing video content can sometimes take years to master. But I can promise you the foundation to all of that is actually creating a video workflow that is streamlined and works for you. When you first get started with video content creation, your workflow can be as simple as taking out your phone, pressing record inside of some app, and hitting publish within that same app. And it can be that simple, that quick, and that easy. But that has its own limitations. And as you move through creating more and more video content for your small business, things can get complicated. And that's why I really wanna to talk to you about refining your overall workflow using my favorite editing tool called Descript. And if you're new here, this is actually part two in my Descript video editing system series. And in case you missed it, head back into part one where I show you the first part of this process, which is organizing your video content. And I promise you, this is a part of the process that you don't wanna skip out on because it's going to make streamlining your video editing workflow so much faster. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so I want to actually jump into the current video I am actually recording right now. So this is gonna feel a little bit kind of crazy. Coming into your Descript project, there are a few different things. I'm currently working in the original recording. And obviously you can see here, this is where the finalized YouTube video will live. But like I said, I'm currently recording this one. So in this original video recording, I wanna show you a couple of different things. I actually like to have my script inside of this original recording. That's what you're gonna see here in the blue. And then anything that I've actually recorded is in the black here and it's already been transcribed. And we'll kind of get into how this works in just a bit. Literally, this is the part that I am recording as of right now. So in order to start scripting your video, you would click on new composition and it brings up just like this blank screen and you can label it script. You can label it whatever you want. And then I hit enter and now you can come up into the right section and you can literally start writing your script here. You can click done writing. In order to add those things that are called markers, you do shift and then hit three, which is also the hashtag symbol. And you can write out like a chapter or whatever you want. And you can start to organize your actual script as well. So this might say something like uh, intro or step one or part two, and you'll see it over here and you'll also see it in your script. So let's say you've written out your script. like, okay, now how do I actually get the recordings in there? One of my favorite things to do is I hit enter. And again, this might get a little metal, it might get a little weird because I'm currently doing this in the script, but you would click on record. You can have a camera option, a screen option, inserting into script will insert it like I, you're watching right here. New layer, this will be added on top of the scene, meaning it's gonna look more like a B-roll clip or something on top of the initial layer, or you can do audio only. And the cool part about this is I then, let me see if it'll actually let me do it. So yes, okay, here we go. This is gonna feel a little weird. Um, I changed the input settings. So I'm obviously this USB video is my Sony ZV-1, but I can switch it technically to my display camera up here. So if you have different inputs, you can choose the setting. And then obviously I have a ton of different mic options, but I'm using my Yeti stereo mic. You can do the screen recording, record it right into script. And this is what saves me so much time in the process because my Sony ZV-1, I don't need to have a memory card in there. I'm not transferring files, downloading, exporting, uploading, like all these different things. It records it right into Descript and automatically transcribes it for me. So I don't have to do any file management. All of it lives in here for me. So let me get out of here. Now, let's say if you don't wanna do the tech and the behind the scenes of that, I totally understand. Let's say you're just recording on your iPhone, you're out and about. You can also upload files, just like any other type of video editing app. So you would simply come over here. I do recommend, go back to the last video and look at folder structure. I do recommend you have different folders. I obviously am still working on this one, so I don't have any folder structure to it yet. But you can add new folders for all the different uh, video clips that you need to upload. You can upload from computer, uh, import from Zoom, import from YouTube, like all kinds of different places, and use them just like you would any other video editing app. So that part that I just recorded that you just watched is now transcribed for me. See, it does take a little bit of buffer time, but again, I'm not having to worry about all of the different importing, exporting, things like that. And now it is automatically transcribed, which brings me into my next part of using that transcription in your video. What you'll see here now is everything that I said in that video has been transcribed for me using AI tools inside of uh, Descript here. So basically what you can see is literally this is what I just said on camera and 
you can do anything to this piece of content like you would in a Word document, and it will reflect itself in the video. So if you've used any kind of traditional video editing software, a timeline is something that you're probably more familiar with. This kind of combines the power of a timeline, but in Word version. And personally, vast majority of the editing that I do for these videos is actually done in the transcription area. Yes, you can come over here and use traditional video editing tools. But for me, what you can do is you can come up into here. You can copy, you can paste. Like if I cut this and I want to move it down here, you can see it was reflected in the video. It would be reflected in the timeline. Let me go ahead and undo that just in case though. Anything that you might want to delete, you can highlight. Like let's say I messed up. You would highlight it. You can hit backspace or if you don't want to get rid of it entirely, you can hit this strike through and it'll skip over that portion. You saw it got deleted in the video. But anything that you do to this transcript here will be reflected in that video. And that also includes like, let's say there's a typo. Sometimes the AI tool does wonky things with the transcript. Like let's say the spelled organize with an S and instead of the Z. You can correct it and you can correct it throughout the entire transcript, things like that, because this is where it will pull captions and all kinds of different things, which we will get into in further videos. So after the scripting and the recording process, this is where my workflow really starts to streamline itself. And we'll get into more detail in the next part of the series. But a quick rundown is now that let's say I'm completely done recording this specific video. I actually come up into Underlord and I start to use some of the AI tools to give me a rough draft of the edit. So sometimes I'll use edit for clarity, which is going to remove some of those filler words like the word um. You can do studio sound, which just enhances your microphone. Uh, this is something that I apply to every single clip that I create in Descript. Removing any filler words, removing retakes. So if you reset something because you messed up the first time, this will remove the initial one or the one that's bad, quote unquote. Shorten word gaps is my absolute favorite. This removes all of the pauses that I take because either I'm looking at the script or I'm taking a breath or taking Taking a pause, any gap that's bigger than 0.2 seconds, I shorten it to 0.1. You can see already, I'm not even halfway done recording this video. There's already 69 instances of it. So that means that traditionally what you used to have to do in timeline-based editors, you would come into this timeline and look for these pauses right here where there's no like waveform. This is dead space. You would have to come in here, splice this, splice this, delete this, and you would have to do that 69 times. Now what you can actually do is you can click short and all and you see it got rid of all of them in literally seconds. Um, I'm going to undo that because I'm still recording this, but I start to go through this and use all of the AI tools at hand. Those are the main ones that I particularly use to get that rough draft edit. Then from there, what I like to do is actually look at the transcript and be like, okay, I know this was a mess up. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Okay, I know I didn't really like this sentence. I'm going to delete it. And I will look at the word based first. Then from there, what I like to do is use the 2x and I will watch the video in its entirety. Already this is 10 minutes, but sometimes my uncurated YouTube videos can be 20 or 30 minutes in length. I listen to it on the 2x to go ahead and run through it and checking for flow. So just making sure things fit nicely together. And from there, there's very few edits that I need to do just based on the way that I structure my YouTube videos. But sometimes I'll delete stuff. Sometimes I'll cut and paste and move stuff around. And then I pass it along to my content manager for further video editing. Those video edits, again, will be coming in part three. So the last part of streamlining this video editing workflow now that we've kind of gone through some of the features inside of a script, there is one that we really, really need to talk about that is going to enhance the way that you actually edit your videos. And it's going to be important for the next coming parts in this series. And that's understanding scenes inside of the script. And what scenes are is if you scroll to the top, this is what makes Descript very different. And I know I've already talked about like kind of traditional timeline editors. Well, yes, you can still kind of do those kind of edits. And we've also talked about how you can edit things inside of the transcript. Now, one of the biggest things you need to understand about scenes is these kind of act like boundaries, if you will. So anytime you see one of these, it is going to be a video clip of sorts and all edits will be applied between those scene boundaries. So for instance, this is a Steam beginner. There's no end right now. So what we'll want to do is we'll hit the forward slash key and you'll notice that this popped up over here. These are the different scenes within the project. And let's say we hit another one here. This here itself is a scene. I can apply edits specifically to this point in the video only. 
And this is gonna be super helpful when we start getting into some of the editing tools and editing features. And while this may feel a little complex, a little complicated, a little new at first, that's all it simply is, this is where the power lies in Descript. So let's say you wanted to highlight something else. You're like, I want to apply text just to this. I want to apply a B-roll video, an audio, a square, literally whatever you want to apply, you can do so here by opening these side panels, dragging and dropping it. Or you can click add scene. You could, there's all kinds of different things that we can do with these. These are where the magic will start to happen inside of Descript. Okay, so now that we've created this scene specifically, you can either come over here and drop your cursor in here, or you can click on it specifically. And what we can do is come over into the scene panel and Descript has a ton of different layout packs. In this gallery section here, these are all ones that have been created by Descript. And then you can also customize these for your brand, which we will get into in the next part. But as you can see, there's a ton of different options in here. We'll go ahead and open one. You can find one that's kind of close to your brand. You click see layouts, you click use layout pack. So now what you're going to see are all kinds of different effects, if you will. This is again, what makes this such a powerful editing tool, because a lot of these things in a traditional video editor, you would have to manually do. So what I'll show you is, let's say we want to come into this list section and we want to apply some kind of cool uh, text here. So you literally click on it and it applies the layout for you. It added all of this stuff. And again, remember only in this scene right here. So you can see it's applied and you can see it is not there. So what this looks like, we'll kind of watch it through. Obviously there was a lot of dead space. Creating and editing, creating and editing video content. Can sometimes now you have this really cool kind of animation, this transition, and it works for so many different things. You can add in different paragraphs. So let's say we would click in there and it would change it automatically. And you can see that this is the power behind Descript and what's going to make your editing process so much quicker, so much faster. And they have a ton of different like really cool animations and things like that for your scenes. So when you kind of scroll out, you can see what this looks like visually in a timeline editor. In a traditional video editing tool, you would have to apply a rectangle. You would have to apply the title text. You'd have to apply the subtitle. And these things that you see right here are animations. So you can see that there's these transitions, zoom in, zoom out, pop up, this, that, and the other. Again, all of that would be a manual process, but since we created those scene boundaries, it applied it for us within the time and space in the video that we wanted it applied to. Now, I do wanna give a big caveat that every video editing workflow for each and every person, every small business owner can look a little different. Some can be more complex and some can be more simple. But I'm hoping by taking a deeper dive into how I edit my videos and my overall workflow inside of Descript, it's giving you a hint at what you could be doing more of and maybe what you could be doing less of. And next week, I'm going to be bringing you part three of how to edit your videos super fast inside of Descript. I'm talking short form video editing in a matter of minutes and long form video editing in less than an hour by tapping into some of Descript's unique tools and features that have allowed me to leave behind CapCut and Premiere Pro. Now, remember, if you are newer to Descript, I have a link in the description below so you can try it for free today. As always, leave your comments, questions, concerns in the comment section below and stay tuned next week for part three.